Hi everybody, welcome to my channel Frugal Isma. My name's Sam and this is where I talk about all things sewing. Today is day 93 of 100 days of sewing and I've got a special little sew along for this little peasant dress. So I've been working along with the Project Dresser Girl which has been headed by Mary Sews and that is sewing a dress for a girl around the world. So I have previously made a video about that explaining all the ins and outs of the project. Today's little sew along is just sewing this dress and giving you some hints and tips. This is a perfect project if you're a beginner. There's no zips or buttons or anything like that. And of course you can sew it anytime. It doesn't have to be done for this uh, project dress a girl. You can sew it for your own children. So I thought I'd just put a simple tutorial together for anybody who wants to sew along. So it's a very simple project. I'll be giving you some hints and tips along the way. And it's a free pattern that's available on the Scattered Thoughts of a Crafty Mom website. And it comes in several sizes from age six months right up to age 14. So this one is the age 14 one and you can see that it quite easily fits on my mannequin here. She does also have lots of hacks for her pattern on that website as well. It is just a print at home pattern. There's no A0 option, but there are only 15 pages. So don't let that put you off. So I'll just recap the guidelines for the Dress a Girl Around the World project, just in case you're making it for that. They would like the fabrics to be either cotton or polycotton, something quite sturdy, certainly nothing see-through and without zips or buttons. So you can use ties, that's absolutely fine. So this pattern's perfect because you've just got elastic around the neck so it's, it's easy to get on and off. There's no fastenings or anything like that. If you're doing the larger size, they do ask that you put a slit up the side about 11 inches, something like that. And they do ask if you could put pockets on. So the peasant girl dress that's on the website doesn't include pockets. So you will just need to draft your own pockets. Quite simple. Some of the other YouTubers have given you some ideas for making pockets. Mary Sews has got one and Jen has got one as well at Jen's sewing room. So I'll leave those two videos below if you don't want to draft your own. But I do talk you through how, how I've done mine as well. So all of the seam allowances on this project are a quarter of an inch. You don't need an overlocker, but they do ask that you do finish your seams in some way. So that could either be a zigzag. If you want to do French seams, then you will need to make a slightly larger seam allowance because quarter of an inch is a little bit on the narrow side for French seams. You could also flat fell your seams as well. The pattern is actually drafted for quarter of an inch elastic as well. If you've only got wider elastic, just remember to make casings a little bit wider. So if you are a little bit short on fabric you could consider colour blocking you could perhaps do the sleeves in a different colour or the pockets in a different colour or contrast something like that or you could uh, split the pattern in half and do the top half in one colour the bottom half in another colour. Just one final thing to think of is just to consider the age of the child. So if you're doing a larger dress like this one, uh, perhaps consider doing something that's a little bit more age appropriate. Just sort of think what you would like to have worn at 40, age 14. You perhaps don't want little teddy bears on it or something like that. But also try and get the best out of your fabric as well. So if you have a look at the size range that, that's available, try and get the biggest dress possible out of it. There is a bigger need for the larger dresses, I believe. That's something worth considering. So yes, this pattern's ideal for beginners and it's ideal for batch sewing as well. You could cut out several at a time and then just sew when you fancy sewing them up. So you are going to need your fabric. It must be non-see-through and your pattern pieces. You'll have a sleeve and a front and a back, scissors, elastic, pins, marking tool, seam gauge is useful and I've got a bodkin for threading the elastic through but you could equally use a safety pin and a measuring tool and then just your regular sewing equipment, sewing machine. If you've got a serger that's fantastic but you don't actually need one for this, you can just zigzag your sides. And another essential piece of kit is an iron and an ironing board. And in addition to the pattern pieces that come with the pattern, you will need to cut a square for a pocket. I've just done a small pocket because this is age 12 months, but there are guidelines for sizes of pockets on the website. And you can do any shape pocket you like. So we've got the peasant dress here from Scattered Thoughts of a Crafty Mom. And you can see that it's just 15 pages long to download, to print and all you do is, I've not trimmed this at all, I've just overlapped the grey bits together. So the one with the wide margin just butts up to the adjoining page 
and you don't need to trim before you stick together. Page 13 is just instructions on how to download, so you don't even need to stick that. You just go three across and then stick each three together down the length. And what you can see is that you've got a front and back piece all in one, a long sleeve and a short sleeve. So there's just three pattern pieces. All the sizes are marked in different colours. So the dash line here is for the tunic length and then the solid line here is for the dress length. We're going to be making the dress length today, not the tunic length. And then at the top of the dress, the dash will be the back and the solid line will be the front. So what I'm going to do now is trace off the size that I want because I might want to do a different size in the future. And you can see that all pattern pieces are cut on the fold. So just a quick note about the sleeve, long sleeve piece. And that is, you'll see that there is a line going down there. Uh, and that's a separate one if you're going to be using knits. So it's obviously a narrower one because you've got a bit of stretch in the knit. If you're going to be doing a, a woven one, then you want the full sleeve piece. Another little note is that the size guide that comes with it goes from 12 to 18 months up to size 14. So on the pattern piece, it goes from 12 months down to size 8 rather than size 14. And size 8 corresponds to the 14. I find that a little bit confusing. I think this is sizing and this is ages. On the website it definitely says it goes to an age 14. So now to cut out your fabric. So on the wrong side of your fabric, I've just marked my fabric front and back because it's ever so slightly different at the front than it is at the back. There's a slight curve at the front. I'm just, before I do any sewing, I'm just going to press the top of the dress down by about a quarter of an inch and then again by a half an inch that's on the front of the dress and on the back of the dress. I'm also going to press the top edge of the sleeves by the same amount, quarter of an inch and then half an inch, and at the bottom, quarter of an inch by half an inch. And I'm just going to do that because it's easier to do now before you sew it in than it is afterwards. So you can use your seam gauge. You don't need to pin anything at the moment. You just press in because you're going to un unfold that and sew it all together. So whilst your iron is still hot, you can just Press your pocket as well uh, because that's going to go on before you start doing any sewing. And what I do is quarter of an inch to the wrong side, flip it over, and then that's about three eighths of an inch the other side. And then what you're going to do is first bit of sewing is you're going to sew these small edges here at about three eighths of an inch either side. So that's your first bit of sewing to start. Okay, so that's your pocket short size sewn. I'm just now going to snip those corners off and flip it through to the right side. And then if you've got a point turner, just pull those out. Back to the iron and then just press these edges in and that should go round about three eighths of an inch and press the bottom up at the same as well. Okay so that's all your pre-pressing done so the tops and the sleeves are all pre-pressed so grab your front piece and the pocket that you've just pressed, sewn and pressed. Just choose a place to put that making sure if you've got a directional print it's in the right direction and I'm not pattern matching today but you can do if you want. Put the placement wherever you feel is appropriate to be quite honest. It's This is a, a dress for a 12 month old so they're unlikely to be wanting to put their hands in it so wherever you think is appropriate. Just pin it down and you're just going to sew around these three edges. If you're doing a dress for an older child the pocket doesn't need to be bigger but it wouldn't be in proportion for this dress and now's a good time also to sew on your label. I haven't had any labels delivered as yet and it's up to you where do you put your label but it must be visible on the dress somewhere so you could even put it on the middle of the pocket if you want underneath the pocket wherever it is visible and any embellishments as well they can go on now okay so we've got the pocket on you can see a little pocket here so i've done it extra secure in this corner here i've done a little triangle because if it comes off they've got no means of sewing things back on so i just wanted to make sure it's extra secure so your next thing is the bit that you've pressed here just Pull it out a little bit and you're going to line up these curves on your sleeves. This is your front and you're grabbing your first sleeve and the short edge needs to go to the top of the dress and the long edge 
facing towards the hem and right sides together you're just going to line up those curves opening out those bits that you've already pressed pin them in together like so you don't need a lot of pins it should align up same for the other side and you're going to sew around this curve at a quarter of an inch if you're not used to sewing curves just take it carefully and feed it carefully through your machine okay so that's your sleeves sewn onto the front and i've actually gone ahead and finished the seams as well i've just done it on my overlocker but you can do a zigzag there so next you want to do the same for the back so if you just put your back your right sides together line up those curves and pin and sew as we did for the front so, a couple of pins in there. Just make sure that all your um, tops and bottoms are aligning and the middle will just ease in. Okay, so it looks a bit odd, but you've got your pins in there. I'm going to go back to the sewing machine, sew on that curve again at a quarter of an inch and finish. And then when you're finished, and you open it all out, it should look like that. So you've got your sleeves in the middle, the back, and the front. Okay, so your sleeves are sewn on now, and you've just got this shape here with a kind of little square at the moment, a hole in the middle. So you've got your back there, your front there, your two sleeves there. What you're going to do now is bring it together, right sides together, line up your hems under your sleeves. Pin it. I'd like to pin all my major points first before I do any in between pinning. So under the arm, pull out those bits that you've pressed previously so that they line up on the hem of the sleeve. A couple more pins in there if you like. It's not really necessary on something so small, but I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch from the hem. You pivot under the arm and then up to the end of the arm. Both sides, you're going to do that and finish it and then come back. Okay, so that's it all sewn together. It's looking like a dress now. I've still got my back plainly marked here and I'm going to press my seams towards the back now. And whilst I'm at it, I'm going to press my hem up and if there's any of these little bits that don't want to go back into position I'm just going to give those an extra little press as well and then we're nearly there. Okay so everything's pre-pressed now. I've done my hem at one centimetre double hem. I've actually surged the bottom of the hem. It just gives me a guideline to follow when I'm pressing it up. So that's all pressed up one centimetre or by one centimetre. Pattern guidelines actually tell you to do it half an inch by half an inch but the Dresser Girl project is saying not to do it that big because I've got no means of letting it down. So I just do a small hem. And then we've got the top casing ready to be sewn down. So that's being pressed again by a quarter of an inch and then half an inch. And if you want to pin it, what I suggest is if you've got some red pins, just put them at a different angle to the rest of your pins where you're going to stop and start. You want to leave a gap at the back, about an inch and a half. Uh, just, just to remind you and then what you're going to do is sew all the way around that casing just at the edge making sure that you're giving yourself enough room for your elastic to go through so if you've got a wider elastic you will have needed to leave a bigger gap mine's just a quarter of an inch elastic so I've got enough to, for it to feed through so I'm going to sew all the way around there leaving a gap and whilst you're at your machine, you can do your sleeves exactly the same, leaving a gap, and you can finish your hem as well. Okay, we're very nearly done here. We just need to cut our elastic for this 12 month old dress. I need a piece that's 15 inches long, and that's for the neck. So I'm just gonna cut that down. And then take your bodkin. It's got grippers on the end, just slide that down, that should catch your elastic and you're just going to thread it through that gap that you've left. 
Of course, you can use a safety pin, but these are far, far easier. And just grab yourself a pin, just to pin that down at the other end to stop it from pulling straight through. Stop that from pulling through. Okay, so that's your elastic pulled through. Just try and make sure it's not twisted. It's quite difficult on this quarter, quarter of an inch elastic. And then you're just going to unfasten your pin at that side without letting them all go and all fall back into the dress. Join them together and just sew those two pieces together there, just with a zigzag stitch. If you're not making this dress for a charity, now would be a good opportunity to just try it on the child before you actually sew that opening back up together. Okay, so that's a elastic sewn together and we just need to sew that gap there. So from the where you started and finished stitching before, you just need to sew across there. If you're going to put elastic in the sleeves, you need to do the same for the sleeves. Or you could just leave them like that. Or you could shear the sleeves as well. It's entirely up to you. So if you're going to add elastic for the sleeves for the size that I'm doing, they need to be seven inch each. And they are put in exactly the same as you would on the, the neck. So you're just threading it through there, joining it and then closing that gap. Okay, so that's your dress all finished. I've given it a nice press. Make sure all my bits of thread are trimmed off. And all that's left to do now is to bob a little label on there and it's ready to send off. Obviously, if you're not doing this for charity, then it doesn't have to have the label. And you don't need a label in the front and the back because you've got the pocket on the front, but you can put one on if you like. But for the charity ones, just a label on the front, somewhere visible. And that's it. I hope this has been helpful and that it's inspired you to make a dress for the project. Uh, let me know below if you're, th if you're thinking of making one. The Project Dresser Girl is running throughout the month of September. However, there is a need for these dresses all through the year. So if you find that September is a little bit of a push for you, feel free to sew these at any time. You just need to contact your ambassador wherever you live. I'll leave a link below to the website and you'll be able to find your own ambassador. Ours is Jackie Onslow in the UK and that's where the dresses actually get sent. They don't get sent to me or Mary. You need to send them to your ambassador. So don't forget to tag myself from Mary. She's Mary Source for Curves on Instagram and she can add you to the tally. She is aiming for 100 and she's already smashed that actually so let's see if we can make 200. It would be fantastic. That's it from me. If this is the sort of thing that you like please remember to like, subscribe. If you hit the notification bell that will tell you when I've got new videos out. Thank you so much for watching. I shall speak to you later. Bye.